All right, so uh, past couple days we've been talking about some stalking and movement and how important it is to learn how to properly move when we go into the, go into the wild places. So the problem is, is most people who go to the woods move the same way in the woods that they do out in society. And, you know, the way we move in society may be good for, for you know, getting to work on time or going from point A to point B. The problem is, is we take that same fast, hasty form of movement into the woods with us, and the things that live in the wild places find that extremely obtrusive, and they will flee. <laughs> so we need to learn more, we need to learn how to match our movements to the ebb and flow of the natural world. And we do that through learning about stalking and movement. Um, you know, just some of the basic principles of stalking and movement are, first, we need to slow ourselves down. You know, because of the society we live in, we are made to move fast. And moving fast does not work in the woods, especially if we're uh, trying to apply it to primitive hunting or uh, stalking an animal to touch it. So we need to slow ourselves down. Another thing we need to do with the stalking movement is we need to, we need to shorten our stride up. And the problem is, is when a modern human moves, they take these giant steps and they hit with these very heavy to toe heel uh, heel to toe footfalls. Not only are those heel to toe footfalls extremely loud in the woods, but if you talk to talk about it from a physical standpoint, very bad on our bodies. You know, when we are hitting in heavy heel to toe footfalls, we're coming down with all of our weight on a stiff outstretched leg, and it creates a ton of shock and vibration through our body. So we 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 get rid of the heel to toe footfall by simply shortening up our stride a little bit moving into what is known as the fox walk. When I'm moving in the fox walk, I'm typically moving about a half to a quarter of the speed I would normally move. I'm shortening my stride by about half, and when my, my foot comes out, I'm, not, I'm purposely not going to hit in that heavy heel-to-toe footfall. I want to use my foot the way it was designed to. So basically, with the fox walk, I'm gently coming down on that foot. I'm hitting with the outside edge of my foot rolling my foot flat on the ground, trying to decide if what I'm stepping on is what I want to be stepping on. When I've made that decision, yes, this is what I want to be stepping on, I will then finish transferring my weight and move into the next step. It's very soft, it's very gentle on the landscape, it's very gentle on your body, and you will, your, your movements will be much more in tune with the ebb and flow of the natural world. You move in the fox walk, you feel what you're stepping on before you transfer your weight. Therefore, I no longer have to look at a 45 degree angle to the ground in front of me to search out any obstacles. And when I allow my feet to feel the ground, I can then have my eyes up and looking around. I can look anywhere. I can look up, down, left, right. I will see many more animals. It's the problem with a lot of humans, they go into the woods and they don't see any animals because they're so fixated at looking at that 45 degree angle to the ground. There's a whole beautiful world out there all around us and you're never going to see it looking at that 45 degree angle to the ground. Alright, so when it comes to the actual act of stalking, and uh, you know stalking is a very broad, broad category um, on movement that is, uh, you know, is involved with hunting, um, when we talk about actual stalking, this is when we are engaged with an animal uh, and we're trying to get into extreme close range. You know, it's very, very difficult to stalk animals um, if you don't have the proper tools. Now, the stalking step I'm talking about now um, is very slow. On average, it is about 66 seconds per step. So you need to think about that. If I have to move 15 feet at 66 seconds per step, uh, that's going to take me a while. So one thing you want to uh, keep in mind when you're stalking an animal at that close of a range, we don't want to stalk to where the animal is now. We want to stalk to where the animal is going to be. We want to set ourselves up on an intercept course. So the basic stalking step, we're moving very slow. And one of the most difficult things with this stalking step is being balanced on one leg. You know, 66 seconds doesn't sound like a lot of time, but when you're on up there on one leg for that long, we might have the tendency to lose our balance.
So one of my favorite ways to practice uh, stalking that doesn't involve moving at all is to just practice being balanced on one leg and trying to have my upper body remain as motionless as possible. You know, it doesn't matter how slow I'm, I'm, my feet are moving, if when I'm up on one leg, I'm wobbly like this, that's gonna give my position away to animals. You know, the, one of the keys to all the stalking and movement is to be as fluid as possible and no sudden movements. You know, animals, prey, game animals' eyes are designed to pick up quick motion. You know, so any movement we do has to be very slow and deliberate and fluid. So when I'm doing this stalk, the first thing I want to do is change my profile a little bit. I want to drop down just a little bit. Um, one reason is it's easier to stalk this way than just straight upright. The other reason is that animals look for that human form, the head and the shoulders and the neck. But by simply changing our profile, shrinking ourselves down a little bit, we can change that profile ever so slightly. And when I do this stalking step, and you know, for, for time's sake, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Um, as I said, an average is 66 seconds per step. And that is from the time my back leg, my back foot, breaks the ground until it comes through all the way into the next step. A good way to practice these stalking steps are with your hands on your thighs. But eventually, you're going to want to integrate a bow and arrow, maybe a throwing stick. Um, you're going to want to work on carrying something because it changes. Uh, your body's dynamics a, a little bit when you add something to your hands. So when I'm, when I'm coming through with this stalking step, I'm peeling my back foot off the ground and I'm attempting to bring my foot forward. Now how high you lift your leg is solely dependent on what you're stalking across. As a general rule, I will keep my foot as close to the ground as I possibly can. But here in this field where I'm stalking, this grass has kind of toughed it up a little bit. So I need to pick my foot up a little higher. Maybe if you're stalking through brush, you might need to pick up your leg even higher. So you need to work and practice on getting that leg up high and over obstacles, over branches, over, over sticker bushes or whatever might be in your path. And as you can see, as slow as I'm moving, this is where that practice on one leg comes into play. You know? And I'm moving quite a bit faster than 66 seconds per step. And you need to work on those times when you're moving slow and you got that leg up high. And you want your upper body to be as motionless as possible. Remember, our feet are meant to act as earthward antenna. Our feet are relaying information about the ground we're stepping on to our brain. That's the beauty about primitive forms of movement is we feel what we're stepping on before we transfer our weight. And when we do that, my eyes can be up and looking around. I don't have to constantly be looking at the ground in front of me. My foot goes down, I place it down, and immediately I'm asking myself, is this what I want to be stepping on? When I've made that decision, yes, I will continue to transfer my weight and move into the next step. If I step on something that's going to make noise or injure me, I can feel it before I commit all of my weight, and I can move my foot over to the left or right, or I can go a little bit ahead of where I was, I was planning on stepping. And it's all about fluidity and slowness, and keeping that mind clear.